All right, uh, good evening. Got a call to order before the uh, Committee of Infrastructure, today being January 22nd at 2020, and the meeting will be called to order at 7.03. I apologize for a little bit. We had to get the projector set up and everything. We've got to have a, a little presentation perhaps later in the program. But anyways, I welcome a uh, new committee member, uh, David Tenza, you know, so it's good. Uh, but I'm going to have now the uh, clerk call the roll. I'm not the clerk yet. Oh, well, you can call the roll. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. <laughs> it's a leftover duty from the, the last time, so. <laughs> Alderman Tom Lopez, Vice Chair. Here. Alderman Jan Schmidt is here. Technically Alderman not Ernest chair. Jetty. Here. And Alderman at Large, David Tenza. Present. And best of all, Alderman at Large, Michael B. O'Brien, Senior Chair. And I'm present, thank you. Also in attendance is uh, Tim Cummings, uh, Economic De uh, Development Director, and also Jill Stanfield from the Parking Department, I think will be uh, joining us. And also to recognize our good friend, Alderman at Large Clee. So, oh, excuse right me, right. Alderman Clee of Ward 3. <laughs> yes, all right then. So now we'll get into the election of the uh, committee clerk. Uh, Jan did a fine job last year, <laughs> so I will entertain uh, a motion for nominations for a new clerk. Alderman Lopez. Since Jan did a fine job last year, I would nominate <laughs> Jan Schmidt as the clerk. For I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you, Alderman Lopez. Uh, is there any other further nominations? Seeing none, got to, uh, do I have a motion to close the nominations? Thank you, Alderman Lopez, that the nominations will be closed. All the, those in favor of uh, Alderman Women Jen Smith to be clerk of the Infrastructure Committee, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And Jan, congratulations. Thank Glad you. Glad to have you back <laughs> on board Thank you again. Very much. Okay. Now, with that little bit of house cleaning done, okay, we're uh, now into public comment. I would like to. Uh, Welcome, we have one person, Ms. Lindsay Rinaldi. Uh, could you please come up? And would you be comfortable where you are, the only one you can stand at the mic like that, or you can sit in the chair if you wish? I'm good. Okay. All right, great. Thank you for having me today. My name is Lindsay Rinaldi. I'm the executive director of the Nashua Community Music School. I also serve as the chair of the Nashua Arts Commission. Uh, I myself have grown up in Nashua. I am, uh, I've went to Nashua school since I was in elementary school, graduated from Nashua High when it was still one school. Uh, so ch big changes in the city of Nashua mean a lot to me. And one of the main reasons why I decided to come back to the city of Nashua to, uh, to work and to give back is because I love the community and I love the city. So the opportunity to serve the, the city where I grew up uh, as the executive director of the Nashville Community Music School is a really special opportunity for me. And over the past five years where I've been serving in this role, I've been working really hard to try to expand our charitable footprint in Nashua. And, uh, and by doing that, one of the things that we have established ourselves, or one of the ways we've established ourselves in the city is through our location and our dedication to being involved in the development of cultural arts in downtown Nashua. And our current location is in the Nashua Mill Yard. So the Nashua Mill Yard I know is an area that uh, the Board of Aldermen and, and many city officials and staff and community members have wanted to see elevate and become a place where people want to go and have a place of industry and arts and to see that whole area thrive. And uh, unfortunately, very recently, we received a threat from the city uh, n basically letting us know that the parking lot that we've been using outside of our building is uh, unfortunately going to become a pay to park monetized parking lot. And I thought it was very important that the infrastructure committee was made aware of this communication. So I, I hope that the reports that I sent ahead of time in, pre in preparation for this meeting were distributed. So uh, would it be worthwhile for me to go through the timeline of the issue or have all the aldermen have the opportunity to, to go through the reports? Would it be helpful for me to summarize? Summarize would be good. Summarize, all right. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, in the report uh, that uh, I submitted, it just has a brief timeline of events. Uh, unfortunately, with no communication made to the business owners, the nonprofit organizations, and the places of worship that currently reside in 3 and 5 Pine Street Extension, uh, the notification was received by the city. Uh, notif notification was presented to those tenants and folks and patrons of those businesses and organizations uh, via a paper flyer that was attached to people's cars, as well as a like uh, stationary signs that were put in the put throughout the parking lot uh, on the morning of Monday, uh, December 16th. And the communication that was written and put on people's cars was saying that the parking lot was going to become a pay to park situation as of February 2020, which would be next month. Uh, this would be an incredible, an incredible burden and an incredible impact to the businesses and the community service organizations and the three places of worship in these buildings. Uh, so I immediately was trying to get to the bottom of the situation and figure out, you know, how this could be happening, especially on such a quick timeline. Uh, so, you know, I reached out to uh, to Director of Economic Development, Tim Cummings, and he provided me with some great answers uh, that gave me a better idea of how this decision was made and why the communication was issued in the way that it was. So as a result of that, the, the threat still loomed uh, due to the significant impact that changing this lot to a monetized lot would be on my particular nonprofit service organization and the other organizations in the building. So we chose to hold a town hall style meeting in the National Community Music School uh, that basically united the different business owners or, business or organizational leaders in the building with uh, Director Tim Cummings. Uh, Jill Stansfield was there as the parking manager to help talk about the situation and, and where it is right now, as well as the landlord and his attorney were present. Uh, so we had a good conversation so we could also have a better understanding of, of the entire situation and the intent of the city. And we, we were also given the opportunity to express different statements of impact on behalf of the businesses and the nonprofit organizations and the places of worship to members of city staff to let them know in a formal setting how the decision to make this lot uh, a pay to park situation on such a tight time frame could be detrimental. Uh, in that meeting, I feel that we were heard and then the next step is essentially coming to you folks to see if there is the opportunity to make a change to the timeline. When I submitted this report uh, initially to give a summary of the situation to you folks today, the goal was to make the Board of Aldermen aware of how the communication and the change of the management of this lot was going to be or was how it was handled or how it was understood to be handled by a, by a nonprofit leader, by someone in the building, by a tenant. So I am here on behalf of the other tenants in the building to make a request. So our appeal to the city is that if this monetization of the law is to occur, if this pay to park situation is to occur, we are asking for a two-year time frame or two-year delay of that decision to allow the following situations or the following things to occur. Number one, it has become apparent to us within that, that uh, town hall style meeting that it is necessary for additional time for the landlord and the city of Nashua to address a conflict. My understanding is that there is a certain conflict and certain litigation that may or may not be happening between the city and the, and the landlord. And we feel that it is very important that they get the opportunity to address that conflict without making a negative impact on the, the business owners and the organizations in the building. Because unfortunately, because a result, the result of this conflict, I believe is the way the information, the, the change in the parking lot was delivered. And that's part of what's, what's providing um, such panic amongst the tenants. 
Secondly, this two-year time frame would provide the opportunity for the current tenants in the building um, as businesses to adjust their budgets to be able to afford to purchase a city permit. It would allow uh, organizations like myself, the National Community Music School, to fundraise appropriately to be able to afford any sort of city permit that might be necessary for my staff, faculty, and student body if given the opportunity, or collect donations in order to uh, be able to afford these types of parking permits. Uh, a two-year time frame would also allow the current tenants to be able to relocate without experiencing extreme financial penalty. Uh, it isn't easy to relocate a business or a place of worship or a school like mine that serves over 250 students a week. Uh, we can't just do that on the time frame of a month or a few months. It has to be calculated, <laughs> it has to be organized, and the, by, by changing the lot to a monetized lot without any sort of flexibility would, for an organiza organization like mine, be basically a forced eviction notice, and we would have to leave immediately, and we wouldn't want to have to relocate in a way that would also then significantly diminish our ability to continue ser servicing this city in the charitable ways that we do. And f uh, the, the fourth opportunity within this two year time frame would provide the opportunity for the city of Nashua to reevaluate their decision to convert the lot to a pay to park system. My understanding now is that there uh, is going to be a parking study that is going to help evaluate uh, the status of the lot. And when I received that uh, letter, um, when I received that information in writing from Jill Stansfield just an hour after I, I submitted my report, I thought that that was a wonderful gesture in the right direction. Uh, but the letter states now that the monetization of the lot uh, won't necessarily be um, you know, put into practice or, or, or uh, established, I don't know what the right political word is, until the end of the summer, which still would create an incredible hardship for an organization the size of mine, as well as the, the three houses of worship in our particular mill building. So my takeaway today is I understand that these projects are considered by the Infrastructure Committee. I understand that in the grand scheme of all the different construction and infrastructure projects in Nashua, something like this you know, could easily be overlooked. And I wanna make sure that it makes the priority list because the impact of making this lot a pay to park system would be incredibly detrimental to the organizations and the businesses that currently reside in the lot. And I firmly believe that choosing to make this lot a monetized lot would actually deter people from coming to the Nashua Mill Yard overall and enjoying the services that the, the tenants that are there have been trying to provide. <clears throat> I ask uh, at this time if there's any questions about you know, what I've presented here. Yes. If I may, yes. do you have a written copy of what you'd like to leave with us? Uh, yes, yes, and this was all submitted to Donna mm -hmm. ahead of time as well. Yeah, we have it. We have the, the uh, meeting minutes. Oh, we have super. it in the septic as part of the communications. Yeah, yes, but, yeah. we're all set. Yeah. So, okay. all right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rinaldi. I would like to say that uh, <clears throat> We appreciate you being here, and this committee, uh, as you know, when you had the town hall meeting, uh, Mr. Cummings was there, uh, Alderman Schmidt was there, and myself. Uh, we do appreciate your advocacy of this, and you're going to be probably one of the, uh, the committee does recognize you as will be the lead contact and stakeholder for this type of, as we mitigate this as we go on. But as I think you can appreciate, as you brought up the 
of several different points, you know, five points there and everything. Uh, <clears throat> we're still tumbling through the weeds and everything on this. So there has not been any discussion and anything at right now that is anything solid. But we will remain in contact and consider your being part of the stakeholder and one of your advocacy for this and everything. We'll keep you informed as the committee goes forward on this, you know, but it's uh, it is going to take time. I, I don't see the five alarm fire. It's not as is cute. It is a process that we'll be going through with this. So we'll keep you up to Brussels as we move along. Uh, may I respectfully ask, uh, I, th how will the deadlines of this project be communicated? I, like, how are they set? I'm, I'm unfamiliar with, with the process. Yeah. So uh, to explain it right now, it's uh, did, we do have like this pending, as you are aware, uh, the parking study. And uh, we are probably going to take a, a lot of that recommendation that is within that. And it's not only looking at your facility, it's going to be uh, other places within the downtown area. And, you know, as far as looking at large, it's something that really hasn't been done in this city in a long time, you know, if it was ever done previously. So this is a big piece to chew on, you know. So uh, we'll be looking at that, and again, we'll keep you informed of, you know, when it comes, you know, up to your particular piece that you're concerned about with the three to five. I do have first uh, Alderman Lopez in the queue. Alderman Lopez? Yes, I just want to clarify, there's no enabling legislation to allow for paid parking on this lot. Um, so there's no legal way that it would be enforced or implemented. I think it's unfortunate that it was communicated, especially with deadlines, that it would be taking effect by February or it would be taking effect by even the end of summer because without that enabling legislation, it will not take effect. And that's a decision that all of us are elected to make. So it has not been proposed through the legislation. It has not been enabled. We haven't had a discussion here. First, you would see it presented at the Board of Aldermen as a piece of legislation. Then you would see it discussed here at the Committee of Infrastructure, and then it would go back to the full board to be confirmed. Personally, I'm not inclined to do it at all. Um, I will, I'm willing to agree not to propose any legislation or to vote favorably without consulting with the Milliard um, representatives. So, I mean, as the, your local alderman, that's what, for what that's worth, I wouldn't support it until I saw that. Um, but I do not believe, without speaking for the rest of the committee, I do not believe anybody intends to take any step until the parking study has been done, and that's a parking study which would include public input, particularly in the areas that the parking would affect. With the steps in that process, uh, is that something that I can see, I can receive notification when we're moving to that next step, or is that something I just need to like be on, be on top of reading the public agenda and things like that for the Board of Aldermen. I, I think, I don't know exactly <coughs> how that would really uh, be done, but I think working with the, uh, Mr. Cummings, the Economic Developing Court and, uh, Director, uh, I think we'll probably send you notifications when it comes down and uh, to have you as part of, you know, working with us on this. Even just speaking for myself, if I yeah. saw any legislation to this effect, I would make sure that I told all of the businesses because they've been contacting me pretty regularly. Right. So I'm aware of the concerns. So at least I can say if, if anything that even looked like it was going to be parking in that area took place, I would come and tell the businesses. Right. Well, I really, I really appreciate that. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. you know. um, Alderman Tenza? No, I, I was going to say something similar to uh, Alderman Lopez. Um, in that nothing can happen without the full consent of the board. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I, I'll just say to the general public and to, to Ms. Rinaldi is, is you know, this is a type of public input that we we need on all, I um, agree. Mm -hmm. all infrastructure and other yes. related issues. So we appreciate you being the, the lead uh, person and having a community meeting and, yeah. and bringing it to our attention because um, rather than waiting until uh, it, gets to us and we're ready to take a final vote. We know about this now. Right. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, shame on us if, if uh, one or more of us don't contact you if something were to were to come forward. So thank you. Thank you. I, I agree with Alderman Tenzer. But I hope you, uh, Ms. Rinaldi and uh, 
and everybody that is, you know, paying attention, you know, and some of your stakeholders, that again, this is still in the developmental stage and everything. So uh, there's plenty of, uh, it's not time to come up with a final solution at this particular time. So we're still working on it. And we'll be probably working on it for a couple of months here. And particularly working on it when the study does come to fruitation that we get the chance to take a look at it. Thank you. Okay. I, I think that um, speaking as a, as a representative of the tenants in the two buildings that are affected, I, I appreciate the recognition of that and I appreciate the open communication. Uh, speaking as someone representing my own nonprofit organization, um, I, I just, I want, I'd like to, you know, leave you with, with, with this to have to relocate a school of my size would, would take uh, it would take years. It would take a minimum of two years to be able to do it um, well and strategically and without shaking the 35-year-old foundation that we have uh, created in this city. Uh, we're one of the first tenants to be in that area, and we were proud to be in that area to be able to help the revitalization of the mill yard come around. We invested over $35,000 in the build-out of our organization in order to be able to make the mill yard a more beautiful and artful place. And uh, at the current parking permit rates that were proposed, uh, the if they were to stand as they are currently designed, which is $50 a month per spot, it would approximately cost $15,000 a year to just permit my faculty and staff members. Uh, this $15,000 a year is equivalent to the programming that we donate to the charity and that the charitable uh, avenues in the Title I schools in Nashua. Um, our strategic planning is to increase our footprint in the Title I schools in Nashua, as well as continue to provide uh, positive workshops and musical events to the city of Nashua and, and all of its uh, residents and, and greater Nashua area folks. Uh, it would be a real shame to see us have to reinvest that money into parking permits in order to be able to stay in the location that we have nurtured from its ugly point to its now, I think it's much more beautiful point in the, in the mill yard. We're, we're proud to be there and we would like to stay there. We would like to stay as a firm part of the city of Nashua and particularly in the downtown area. And I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you folks today because I do believe that if we, we can work with the city to find a solution that works for everyone because I do not feel that the city is making these decisions to punish anybody. I think that they're just doing their due diligence to find more revenue and I understand that and respect that. So I, I kindly ask that as we move forward on this project that it stays a priority and that we are notified and I appreciate the recognition, recognition of this committee and uh, the support that I have continued to receive from Director Cummings and Jill Stansfield. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Alderman Jetty. If I could um, just ask you one question while you're here. Yeah. So uh, do you have a, a written lease and does it talk about parking? We don't have a formal lease currently. It is okay. a point of conflict. Okay, thank you. Seeing that, Ms. Rinaldi, thank you very much for your input. I very, very much appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to call Ms. Barbara, follow Alderman Barbara Presley. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Understanding you're getting new carpeting, new desks. How wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. It's been my pleasure to serve on the board of directors of the Nashua Community Music School. It's really a wonderful, exciting place. When you arrive there and you see kids carrying their heavy instruments up this long flight of stairs, and uh, the, just the, the joy and activity that's taking place there. In many ways, I feel that this program is really a public purpose. 
because as we all know, our public schools are having to cut back a lot and they, they choose to, to cut back on the music schools, music uh, activities. So um, I feel that this school is, is really providing a wonderful public service for not only the children, but the whole community. I'd also like to point out that the location is, it's always challenging if somebody wants to visit and I have to try to describe how to get there. <laughs> if, I hope you all have, have found it. <laughs> and um, I sort of describe it sometimes, it, it's like driving through a, a war zone to get to it. <laughs> so it certainly is quite different from other parking lots that have um, adequate lighting. The, uh, the roads leading to it are open and, and uh, it's quite different. I, it does not have any of the amenities that the other public parking spaces have. So if you do proceed to do this, I hope you will consider the cost involved in having to put up adequate lighting so people can see at night. And also um, some of the buildings there, it really does look like a war zone, but we love it there and the kids do are doing fine. But I hope you will consider this exempt from this type of activity. Every time I've been there, it's been very vacant. There, you know, it's not a full parking lot. It's not like people are clamoring to to get space there. Uh, it's usually just the the few tenants that uh, people like myself. But thank you. Good luck on your deliberations. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Brizzle. Seeing no other uh, speakers at this particular time, we'll move on to regular uh, items on the agenda. Communications. Um, then we have a communication from Lindsay Rinaldi, <clears throat> Pine Street Extension parking lot. There being no objection, I will accept the communications and place it on file. Petitions? We have none. Unfinished business? Also none. New business resolutions? We have resolution 20-002 uh, relative to the acceptance and appropriation of 294000 uh, from the Community Development Finance Authority into Capital Project Grant Activity Investment Tax Credit Program for the Performing Arts Center. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I recommend final passage. Okay, I would like to just briefly take a moment to speak on this. Uh, this is something that we're going to do in conjunction with our uh, colleagues in the Planning and Economic Development Committee. Mm -hmm. They had a meeting on the 21st to which this was tabled. Uh, we are very fortunate to have the chairman of that particular committee <laughs> as a member of our committee. So we're going to work together. We, we will get together and call for a, a specific meeting date, and we'll convene both groups on that. So therefore, I am going to look to uh, the committee member of uh, Alderman Tenza. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to table R20-002 so that we can uh, hold a joint uh, committee meeting with planning and economic development. Okay. The new motion is to table. Any uh, discussion on the motion? Alderman Lopez. I would like to express my support for this since yesterday I was too sick to attend and today here I am. Apparently I could have just come to one meeting, so I think <laughs> having a joint session would just be great for everybody. Yes, I, that's the intention. Both committees do have a stake in this, so it's uh, working together and I look forward to it. Further discussion? Seeing nothing, none, <clears throat> I will call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. New business ordinances. We have none. Tabled in committee. Also none. Mm -hmm. General discussion, Alderman Lopez. Um, I just want to make comments with regards to the parking study. It's extremely important that we engage the community um, in making sure they know when the parking is taking place and happening, because particularly on Main Street and the surrounding areas, there seem to be two schools of thought with parking. Some say that there needs to be much more parking regulation and cars need to be moving in and out, and others, their businesses rely on cars being able to stay long enough in order to serve meals or um, shop around or that type of thing. Um, so there's a lot of committee input, um, particularly for me, this is why I was frustrated last meeting, um, because this is like the largest area of complaints or concerns that I get from, uh, from uh, businesses in the downtown area. 
Um, we've lost many businesses. We've lost Graffiti Paint Bar. We've lost Riverside Barbecue. Uh, Revolution uh, just changed hands. Um, That's kind of the tip of the iceberg. Even El Kalima and their new um, the new the new business in their site have struggled um, because of parking. It, it makes or breaks a business. And to see a nonprofit organization like the Music School struggling with whether or not they would be able to stay in the downtown, we really need to be very careful how we proceed because if our purpose is to enhance the quality of life downtown by making improvements like making sure parking is regulated, we need to make sure we're not harming businesses when we do that. That's gonna require input from the businesses, from the individuals that are parking. We need to be very, very careful about this and come up with a, a unified plan that prioritizes not just the economic revenue generated from the parking spaces, but the impact of the people that we're affecting towards the overall economy. Uh, further general discussion? Okay, seeing none, public comment. Uh, the public is welcome to come up, but you already, if you already <laughs> expressed your opinions and that's it, we completely understand and appreciate you your efficiency. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, remarks by Alderman. <clears throat> Seeing none. Uh, possible non-public session. Uh, I'll move to enter non-public session <laughs> pursuant to RSA 91-A colon 3. Uh, numero 2D, consideration of the acquisition sale or lease of real or personal property, which if is, is discussed in public, would likely benefit a party or parties whose interests are adverse to those of the general community. Okay, in order to go into non-public se uh, session, this will be a voice roll call vote. The clerk, please, will call the roll. I will. Order. Yes, Alderman Jetty. I, I know under... Our normal rules, Mason's rules, uh, motions don't need a second, but the statute uh, for non-public sessions uh, does talk about uh, motion properly made and seconded. So I don't know if, we, if that's necessary, but I would like to second it just to make sure we're covered. That. We're covered. <laughs> well, I think we're covered because I'm going by you know, the way I, I had. Uh, it is good to discuss this. You know, this was put in, so, but I will look at that. I will ask that question put perhaps off council and see what they have to say on that. Uh, so Alderman O'Brien. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Jan Schmidt says yes. Alderman Ernest Jetty. Yes. And Alderman at large David Tenza. Yes. That okay. would be all yes. Well, do we have the vote if the clerk is correct of uh, five to nothing? And we'll go into non-public session at 7.36. I'll ask that the uh, TV crew will now blacken the screen so that we can discuss the items on.